Though one of the greatest kings in England, Edward I, or known as Longshanks, was born at Westminster Palace on the night of the 17th of June 1239. His parents were King Henry III and Eleanor of Provence. Henry named the newborn child Edward after the last Anglo-Saxon king and his father's favorite saint Edward the Confessor. Edward received a disciplined education reading and writing in Latin and French with training in the arts of science and music. There were concerns about Edward's health as a child. He fell ill in 1246. 1247 and 1251 but nonetheless he pulled through. In his early years Edward commonly referred to as the Long Edward, and as he grew to six feet two a tall strapping man for his era and eventually hence the nickname Longshanks. In 1254 Edward traveled to Spain for an arranged marriage at the age of 15 to 13 year old Eleanor of Castile. So part of political deal to affirm English sovereignty over Gascony, the young couple were married at the monastery of Las Hulgas Burgas on 1st of November 1254. As part of marriage agreement Edward received grants of land worth 15,000 marks a year. Although the endowments King Henry made were sizable they offered Edward little independence. He had already received Gascony as early as 1249 but Simon de Montfort, 6th Earl of Leicester had been appointed as royal lieutenant the year before. He consequently drew its income so in practice Edward derived neither authority nor revenue from this province. The grant he received in 1254 included most of Ireland and much land in Wales and England including the Earldom of Chester. But King Henry retained much control over the land in question particularly in Ireland. So Edward power was limited there as well and the king derived most of the income from those lands. The years 1264 to 1267 saw the conflict known as the Second Barons' War in which baronial forces led by Simon de Montfort fought against those who remained loyal to the king. The first scene of battle was the city of Gloucester which Edward managed to retake from the enemy. When Robert de Ferrer's Earl of Derby came to assistance of the rebels, Edward negotiated a truce with the Earl the terms which he later broke. Edward then captured Northampton from de Montfort, his son also Simon. The baronial and royalist finally met at the Battle of Lewes on the 14th of May 1264. Edward commanding the right wing performed well and soon defeated the London contingent of de Montfort's forces unwisely however he followed the scattered enemy in pursuit and on his return found the rest of the royal army defeated. By the agreement known as Mice of Lewes Edward and his cousin were given up as prisoners to de Montfort. Edward remained in captivity until March and even after his release he was still kept under strict surveillance. Meanwhile de Montfort used his victory to set up a de facto government. He even summoned the Parliament of 1265 known as de Montfort's Parliament. Then on the 28th of May 1265 Edward managed to escape his custodians and joined up with the Earl of Gloucester who had recently defected to the king's side. Montfort's support now was dwindling and Edward retook Worcester and Gloucester with really little effort. Meanwhile Montfort had made alliance with Llewellyn and started moving east to join forces with his son Simon. The two forces then met at the second great encounter of the Barons' War the Battle of Eversham on 4th August 1265. Montfort stood little chance against the superior royal forces and after his defeat he was killed and mutilated on the field. The war did not end with Montfort's death and Edward continued campaigning. At Christmas he came to terms with the younger Simon de Montfort and his associates at the Isle of Axholm in Lincolnshire. In March he led a successful assault on the sink ports a contingent of rebels held out in the virtually impregnable Kenilworth Castle and did not surrender until the drafting of the conciliatory dictum of Kenilworth. In April it seemed as if Gloucester would take up the cause of the reform movement and civil war would resume. But after a renegotiation of the terms of the dictum of Kenilworth the parties came to an agreement. 
Edward, however, was little involved in the settlement negotiations following the wars at this point. His main focus was planning his upcoming crusade. Edward took the Crusaders' cross in an elaborate ceremony on 24 June 1268 with his brother Edmund Crouchback and cousin Henry of Elaine. Among others who committed themselves to the Ninth Crusade were Edward's former adversaries like the Earl of Gloucester though de Clare did not ultimately participate. With the country pacified the greatest impediment to the project was providing sufficient finances. King Louis IX of France who was leader of the crusade provided a loan of about £17,500. This however was not enough and the rest had to be raised through a tax on laity which had not been levied since 1237. In May 1270 Parliament granted a tax 20th in exchange for which the King agreed to reconfirm Magna Carta and to impose restrictions on Jewish money lending. On the 20th of August Edward sailed from Dover for France. Historians have not determined the size of the force with any certainty but Edward probably brought with him around 225 knights and altogether fewer than 1,000 men. Originally the Crusaders intended to relieve the beleaguered Christian stronghold of Acre, but King Louis had been diverted to Tunis. Louis and his brother Charles of Anjou the King of Sicily decided to attack the Emirate to establish a stronghold in North Africa. The plans failed when the French forces were struck by an epidemic which on 25th of August took the life of Louis himself. By the time Edward arrived at Tunis Charles had already signed a treaty with the Emir and there was little else to do but return to Sicily. The crusade was postponed until the following spring but a devastating storm off coast of Sicily dissuaded Charles and Louis' successor Philip III from any further campaigning. Edward decided to continue alone and on the 9th of May 1271 he finally landed at Acre. By now the situation in the Holy Land was a precarious one. Jerusalem had fallen in 1244 and Acre was now center of the Christian state. The Muslim states were on the offensive under the Mamluk leadership of Babers and were now threatening Acre itself. Though Edward's men were an important addition to the garrison they stood little chance against Baber's superior forces and an initial raid at St. George's de Lebine in June was largely futile. An embassy to the Lakhana Baba 1234 to 1282 of the Mongols helped bring about an attack on Aleppo in the north which helped to distract Baber's forces. In November Edward led a raid on Kukun which could have served as a bridgehead to Jerusalem but both the Mongol invasion and the attack on Kukun failed. Things now seemed increasingly desperate and in May 1272 Hugh III of Cyprus who was the normal king of Jerusalem signed a 10-year truce with Babers. Edward was initially defied but an assassination attempt by a Syrian Nizari assassin supposedly sent by Babers in June 1272 forced him to abandon any further campaigning. Although he managed to kill the assassin he was struck in the arm by a dagger feared to be poisoned and became severely weakened over the following months. It was not until the 24th of September 1272 that Edward left Acre. Arriving in Sicily he was met with the news that his father had died on the 16th of November 1272. Edward was deeply saddened by this news but rather than hurrying home at once he made an enjoyable journey northwards. This was due partly to his still poor health but also to a lack of urgency. The political situation in England was stable after the mid-century upheavals and Edward was proclaimed king after his father's death rather than at his own coronation as had until then been customary. In Edward's absence the country was governed by a royal council led by Robert Bernal. The new king embarked on an overland journey through Italy and France where among other things he visited Pope Gregory X. Only on the 2nd of August 1274 did he return to England and he was crowned on the 19th of August. Edward's reign had two main faces. 
The first phase was administration of now a peaceful country. The second phase was warfare against Wales and Scotland. His first concern was to restore order and re-establish royal authority after the disastrous reign of his father. He appointed Robert Burnell as Chancellor who held the post until his death in 1292. Edward then replaced most local officials such as sheriffs. This was done to prepare for an inquiry which would hear about complaints about abuse of power by royal officers. Laws were made to define rights about ownership of land recovery of debts trade and local peacekeeping. Edward reformed the English Parliament and made it a source for generating revenue. Edward held Parliament regularly in his reign. In 1295 a significant change occurred. For this Parliament in addition to the Lords, two knights from each county and two representatives from each borough were summoned. Before the Commons had been expected simply to assent yes to decisions already made by the rulers, now they would meet with the full authority of their communities to give assent to decisions made in Parliament. The King now had full backing for collecting lay subsidies from the entire population. Lay subsidies were taxes collected at a certain fraction of the movable property of all lawmen. Historians have called this the model Parliament. Llywelyn ap Grufford was the main Welsh leader. He refused to do homage to Edward and married Eleanor the daughter of Simon de Montfort. In November 1276 war was declared. Initial operations were launched under the captaincy of Mortimer Edmund Crouchback Edward's brother and the Earl of Warwick. Support for Llywelyn was weak among his own countrymen. July 1277 Edward invaded with a force of 15,500 men of whom 9,000 were Welshmen. The campaign never came to a major battle and Llywelyn soon realized he had to no choice but to surrender. By the Treaty of Aber Conway in November 1277 he was left only with the land of Gwynedd though he was allowed to retain the title Prince of Wales. When war broke out again in 1282 it was entirely different. For the Welsh this war was over national identity. It had wide support especially after attempts to impose English law on Welsh subject s for Edward it became a war of conquest. The war started with a rebellion by Daffod Llywelyn's younger brother who discontented with the reward he had received from Edward in 1277. Llywelyn and other Welsh chieftains soon joined in and initially the Welsh experienced military success. The Welsh advances ended on 11th of December however when Llywelyn was lured into a trap and killed at the Battle of Oyuin Bridge. The conquest was complete with the capture in June 1283 of Daffod who was taken to Shrewsbury and executed as a traitor next autumn. Further rebellions occurred in 1287 and 8 and in 1294. In both cases the rebellions were put down. By 1284 Statue of Rudland Wales was incorporated into England and was given an administrative system like the English with counties policed by sheriffs. English law was introduced in criminal cases though the Welsh were allowed to maintain their own laws in some cases of property disputes. After 1277 and increasingly after 1283 Edward embarked on a full-scale project of English settlement of Wales. He created new town like Flint, Aberystwyth and Rudland. Edward started a big program of building castles to keep the Welsh under control. His castles started the widespread use of arrow slits in the castle walls across Europe drawing eastern influences. Also a product of the Crusades was the introduction of the concentric castle and four of the eight castles Edward founded in Wales followed the design. In 1284 King Edward's son Edward the later Edward II was born at Carnarfon Castle. In 1301 at Lincoln the young Edward became the first English prince to be invested with the title of Prince of Wales. 
Scotland and England were at peace in the 1280s. Alexander III of Scotland and Edward had an understanding whereby Alexander held land in England. This gave him the excuse to acknowledge Edward as his lord and left ambiguous whether or not this applied to Scotland as well. The heir to the throne was his infant granddaughter Margaret. Unfortunately Alexander died in 1286 followed by Margaret in 1290. This left Scotland without a king which started all the problems. There were 14 claimants John Balliol and Robert de Bruce the grandfather of the famous Robert de Bruce had the best cases. The competitors agreed to hand over the realm to Edward until a decision was made. John Balliol was chosen in 1292. Edward continued to push his calm as overlord of Scotland. He interfered in some legal affairs of Scotland and insisted the Scots provided military service in his army. This caused Scots to make an alliance with France. They then attacked Carlisle. Edward responded by invading Scotland in 1296 and taking the town of Berwick in a particularly bloody attack. At the Battle of Dunbar Scottish resistance was effectively crushed. Edward confiscated the Stone of Destiny the Scottish Coronation Stone and brought it to Westminster. He deposed of Balliol and placed him in Tower of London and installed Englishmen to govern the country. The campaign had been very successful but the English triumph would only be temporary. the Scottish conflict seemed in 1296 it was started again by William Wallace who came from one of the notable families. Wallace was a warlord rather than a politician and soon started a rebellion. He defeated a large English force at Stirling Bridge in 1297 while Edward was in Flanders. In 1298 Edward defeated Wallace at the Battle of Falkirk. After that the Scots avoided open battle in favour of raiding England with small groups. Edward's next move was political in 1303 a peace agreement was made between England and France breaking up the France and Scottish alliance. Robert the Bruce and most of the other nobles pledge allegiance to Edward. Wallace was betrayed and handed to the English. He was publicly executed. The situation changed again in 1306 when de Bruce murdered his rival John Comyn and had himself crowned King of Scotland by Isabel sister of the Earl of Buchan. Edward in Earl Health sent armies north under other commanders. Bruce was beaten the Battle of Methven in June 1306. After the battle Edward followed with brutal suppression of the allies of the Bruce. In response this fueled more rebellions. This conflict was still in progress in 1307 when Edward now an elderly man led his final campaign into Scotland before dying at the border city of Burg by Sands at 68 leading to succession of the Prince of Wales as Edward II of England.